Good morning. This um, little short video is an explanation of the Karnofsky performance scale, the palliative performance scale, and the ECOG, which is the Eastern um, Cooperative Oncology Group performance scale. So I'm going to share my screen and let's get right to it. I'll help you try to understand how these scales are used and how to best utilize them yourself within practice. Okay, so let me make this larger. So what we have here is we have the Karnofsky scale on the left with the numbers associated with each of those categories, and then the ECOG scale, which gives a little more explanation and maybe help would help you to better understand. So I am actually going to Zoom in, I'm going to move my face over here. And we're going to look at each of these categories, okay? So, oops, did not mean to do that. Okay. So the way the scale works is a little confusing, I admit, because some of the verbiage that's used um, it talks about hospitalization, and that's not really what they mean. So let me try to help everyone better understand it. We're going to start at the bottom. So zero is dead. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. I think everybody would understand that, right? Um, when we get to 10, it's as far as the Karnofsky scale, it uses the word moribund, and that means completely disabled, can't carry on any self-care, totally bedbound right? Can't do anything for themselves, okay? Not obtunded, but more abundant. When we get to the score of 20 on the KP scale, very sick, hospitalization necessary, if they were going to be hospitalized. So in other words, here's a better explanation. They're completely disabled, right? They can't carry on any self-care and they're totally bed bound, but maybe a little bit responsive, maybe not. That's a score of 30. So it doesn't mean that they're going to the hospital. It means that they are completely disabled. They're bed bound. They can't do any of the ADLs. They're dependent for six out of six. And, you know, they're, they're so severely disabled that under different circumstances, a hospitalization would be necessary. But we understand with hospice, that's not the case. Okay. Um, for a score of 30, again, severely disabled. Hospitalization indicated, although death is not imminent. So when you're looking at a 20 or less, that's saying that death is imminent. And being imminent means that they are modeling, they're maybe in chain stokes, respirations, they have cool extremities. So they're showing signs of imminent death, not eating, not drinking. So that's a 20. When we get to a 30, they're not quite to an imminent death, but they probably have a week or less. So that's a 30 on the KP scale, okay? A 40 means that they're disabled. They require special care and assistance. In other words, maybe they can brush their teeth, but they're not gonna be able to cook for themselves or bathe themselves, right? So the way it's described under the ECOG is they're capable of limited self-care, confined to bed or chair more than 50% of waking hours. When we get up to a 50, that means that they can perform limited self-care and they're confined to a better chair just more than 50% of waking hours. If it's 75% of waking hours or 100%, they're confined, then they are lower than that. And then as we get to the higher numbers, obviously when we're talking about hospice, you know, if there are 100, that means that they are like I am, they're fully active, they can perform self-care, there are no limitations, right? A 90 means eh, there may be minor signs of, of disease or illness. Um, maybe they can still go to work, but like duty, right? An 80, again, they're restricted to physical um, strenuous activity they can't do, but maybe they can get up and walk. They're not going to run, right? Um, they can do maybe light housework. Maybe, you know, they can sit in front of a desk and do computer work. A 70 means they can still care for themselves but they are unable to carry on normal activities. So in other words, what we can do. Um, and the way the ECOG explains it is they're ambulatory capable of self-care, but unable to carry out work activities. 
and they are up and about more than 50% of waking hours. So when we hit that 60, that means that they are, you know, once they get to 60%, they need occasional assistance, but once they get to 50, it's considerable. 40 is even more, 50% of their waking hours are in bed or chair or both and down from there. So use the ECOG as it relates to the KP to kind of help you determine and uh, be a little more objective. Um, there is so much subjectivity when it comes to some of these scales and, and there should not be. Um, there are lots of articles in the National Institute of Health that are peer reviewed research articles that further explain what I've just explained. But understand that the Karnofsky scale was originated in 1947 or 49. Um, I'd have to look it up. I'm not sure exactly which one, but one of those before 1950. And it, it could use a little tweaking. So that's why they came up with the ECOG to kind of help take the two, put them next to each other and say, oh, okay, I see where they, when I look at my patient, here's what they can or cannot do. And then I can more objectively come up with a score. So I hope this helps. I'm gonna do one on other scales like the FAST scale and the New York Heart. That'll be next, talk to you soon. Bye. Please sign the sign-in sheet.